Hey, Abby, listen, I don't listen. want... I you know don't what? Want... You, you shouldn't be in here, and I'm... Don't, I don't care what... You... A mom walks into the practice area, and just like a terrorist, starts demanding what she wants and doesn't want. It's not about what you want. I don't I know who you are, but you shouldn't be in this dressing room. I brought her in here with me. I know, but why are you in here? You're I in the school in suddenly? Right. You didn't ask... I... You didn't it say, excuse matter. me, Abby, could I speak to you? Here's you the just, thing. I want, I, I want, I want. Abby, playing the role of negotiator, promptly tells her she is in no position to make such a demand, as the intruder has no right to be in the training facility in the first place. I came I in want here you to out be of a here. good sport, so I'd rather be in a good sport. Go. And I am going to leave. Service, go. Good luck. Well, if you knew anything about show business, you would you know gonna, not to say good me? luck. No. I can say good luck, break a leg, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does okay, matter. you get asked yeah. out, I get asked. Abby asked her to exit the practice area at once, and the young mom obliged. I mean, Abby is the one giving the command, who wouldn't budge instantly. But in this situation, I don't trust the stalker woman that's here. Let's go. Delay of game. Come on. Abby, in a post-interview, admits she doesn't go backstage, but had to due to the intruder who might show up to cause unrest. I'm kind of curious, Abby, why were you backstage trying to get in my daughter's face? Oh my god. Go, 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 go. Do you stay away you from me? You are face lying. I was 60 I'm feet away from your kid. Speaking of the devil, the intruder, Jeanette, came right behind Abby, accusing her of trying to sabotage the performance of the former's kid. I'm... I want to talk to you because um, I'm putting a complaint in about her. The intruder meets Gina, the owner of Energy Dance, to lay a former complaint against Abby. Abby, Gina comes into the dressing room. You know, I think Jeanette is trying to get us disqualified. You can't go backstage when another group is dancing and intimidate anyone. As if looking for a reason to go against Abby, Gina immediately swings into action and goes to meet Abby while accompanied by the intruder. Are you speak to me that way oh my god abby is not having any of it and challenges gina for rudely speaking to her i'm just here to have your back about what happened backstage jeanette appears from nowhere to support gina in fighting abby she doesn't i wasn't speaking to her I wasn't she addressing said, her talking to me and looked no. behind her and you said yes ironic i went back there to make sure nothing was going wrong with my kids this, this is communication is what i think whatever your kid trumped up to make excuses for that performance so be it don't flatter yourself abby a mom defends abby's actions and as if spurred by the much needed support she pursues her assailants out of the dressing room I went to the dressing room to see kathy because i want the Abby starts episode three by admitting that she went to the dressing room to collect a bee costume from Kathy. I wanted to tell you all congratulations. I, I thought she did a great job. I don't know what happened, but... Upon entering the dressing room, she thanked everyone for their roles in the team's stage performance. How my bee costume? Abby gradually lets the cat out of the bag by asking Kathy if she took her bee costume. Hold on. The ugly bee costume that Vivi wore? Yes. I gave it to the girl girl. solo. Kathy did not quite give the expected response as she calls the costume ugly before revealing she gave it out to Goodwill. Fill me. It's, it's a memory. memory. It's, it's irreplaceable. Not... The response upsets Christy, who was behind Abby. Christy tells Kathy it was a memory and she ought not to have given it away. Talking to you today. Talking to you today. This is between Abby and I. So pipe down. You need. Kathy snaps back, rudely telling Christy that she was not talking to her and that she should pipe down and let the adults, Abby and her, do the talking. This shocks the other kids. Abby is just a rude, mean little woman. She's a nasty old bat. Christy, in her interview, refers to Kathy as a rude and nasty old woman. Don't feel called and they want your nose back. Oh my god, Kathy. Listen. Go ahead. When you have a better insult, something that is. I'm not listening to you. When you have a better insult, that's a. Get out of my face. Oh no. I'll get right in your face. The fight gets dirty as insults start flying around with the spectators pitching their tents with their favorites. Bitch. The dog pound is calling. Move along. Christy finally calls Kathy the B word. And in reaction, Kathy gets a bit physical by shoving Christy. You know what? Take your hands off of me. It looks like the Grim Reaper was holding on to my wrist. 
Like most loudmouths, Christy starts issuing empty threats while being walked out of the dressing room by Kathy. Replace her. I don't know what happened, but Kelly started to talk about Kalani replacing Brooke in the group dance. Brooke is part of this team. She's been in my company forever. She has a right to do the dance. Kelly starts arguing with Abby as the former wants her daughter not to participate in the dance. Kelly recommends that someone else should take her daughter's place. Brooke, is your mother speaking for you? Do you not want to dance? I just want your mother to quit speaking for you. You're 15 years old. Grow the hell up. Abby asks Kelly's daughter if her mom is speaking her mind, reminding her that she is not a kid anymore. But you shut the hell up. See how she talks to me? Abby. Abby's intrusion angers Kelly the more, and she asks the former to shut up. You're not happy with my kid because she doesn't sit here and smart mouth you and say something back. We will leave. That's fine. Kelly opines that she would be leaving with her daughter if Abby is comfortable with keeping her daughter quiet at all times. Kelly, why? I don't, I'm you know just what? asking. Don't even speak I'm just to me. Asking. Oh. Don't even speak to me. Oh, why can't I speak to you? And so I just want to know what we're getting into. A bully for a teacher. Here's your costumes. Enjoy the dance. It's Highlands. Let's go. Girls, do you, you guys well, don't want to go. Obviously, she wants someone who has never danced here take both of my kids' place. No, no the kids want to dance. Yeah. Abby's friend tries to calm the situation down, but she is rudely excused from the conversation. Other moms in the room tried to placate her, but all failed. Say that my daughter looks miserable, so maybe we should put Kalani in her place. No, I never said yes, that. Yes, you most certainly no, did. No, I didn't, Ding that. Listen! Abby now becomes the target of Kelly's anger as Kelly accuses her of badmouthing her child and offering someone else her spot. Abby emphatically denies the accusation. I said, Brooke, is your mother Get speaking your for you? Get your finger out of my up? face. Girls out the room. Yeah, Girls you would out eat me the room. Oh, 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 Tempers get flared up and Kelly physically assaults Abby. Hi, my name is Abby Lee Miller and a woman just grabbed and pulled my hair and scratched my face. And pushing me into the thing, so I pulled her hair. I know the woman and I just, I want to file a report. In my face. She yanked my hair, she scratched, like she, I don't, I don't know, it happened so fast. There were no weapons, no. She doesn't deserve, she doesn't deserve. She doesn't deserve you guys. Because you have been loyal to her since you were two. Um, they're trying to remove her from the premises. They're getting her stuff packed up. You need to leave now. We'll get the rest of your stuff. You need to leave now. Trust me. Now, I'm going to get your girls. Why? You need to go now. You got to go now. She has a black and gold dress on, and she has short, like, a, a haircut that's, like, cool and trendy. Like, it's long in the front and short in the back. Check out and Yeah. No? No, if it was like my knee or my foot, absolutely. Kelly, you have done this to me. Following the incident, Abby informs the police as Kelly runs away. I'm glad the kids and the moms have finally realized that I'm serious about sending somebody home. There's nothing like a little pressure to see who will rise to the occasion and who will ultimately choke. I think a lot is resting on Brady's shoulders. Trish, you told me that everybody's always whining and bitching about, well, oh, he's the lead, he's the lead, he's the lead. Doesn't matter if I'm on top of the pyramid, he's still gonna be the lead. Wah, 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 lily, 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 wah. As far as jealousy goes, or who's the leader of the group, and blah, 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 blah. When the team doesn't work together, the dream doesn't work together. Abby discusses the importance of teamwork to the group while pointing out the individual flaws of her dancers. I keep hearing that you're jealous of Brady. You're talking to Lily. Lily's done nothing and said nothing but dance. Lily's working as a team. I don't know why she's being singled out. Till she mentions Lily, which annoys her mom. It's coming from everybody in this room. Her mom mentions that the fault is not from her daughter alone, but everyone in the room. She feels like Brady's just getting handed things. He does. And you don't have to do anything it's for it. Stacy, you said that Brady comes in here and gets handed everything. You did say that. Everybody said that. I never said that. No. Said, nope. I don't think the moms understand that their opinion doesn't matter to me. I've worked too hard and too long on my comeback to let a bunch of loud mouth, delusional mothers rain on my parade. I've been on that road before, and that is never going to happen again. Other moms are not taking it as they insist the blame is hers and her daughters to carry. Soon thereafter, a big party of blaming is thrown, and everyone participates, screaming and shouting. Look at me. Look at you. Look at you. 
The ongoing screaming party is finally halted when Abby tries standing from her wheelchair. I wanted to do this faith healer dance because I want to walk again. Each and every one of you are capable of great things, but you have to go out on that stage and do those great things together as a group. Can I hear a, a hallelujah? Yeah, come on. I mean, this is a big deal. Abby reminds the group of her reason for the competition. Gradually, calmness is returned and everyone leaves excited. There's always somebody else. I think it's time to bring the new team in. Dun, dun, dun. It's finally here. Everyone is replaceable. Abby starts by telling the team that everyone can be replaced and goes ahead to introduce a new member. They're actually not crazy. These moms are all like loving each other and it's all kumbaya, except one. You give all these moms all of your time. You're the one taking up her time right now. Whoa. We have a whole new element of crazy. I am trying to connect with you guys to get some empathy. And it's like, are you I met you two days ago. This woman is nuts. Not only is she screaming and sermonizing every chance she gets, offering exorcisms. Like, who brought this nutball to the studio? No sooner had they arrived did one of the moms start disturbing the old moms. I think uh -huh. I Just keep lying. Did you call me a liar? Aha, uh -huh. if the shoe fits, wear it. It was not until she indirectly called Abby a liar that all hell broke loose. Let your mother totally is ridiculous. pulling you out of the routine. Well, Let's go. Thing you can do yep. is Bye. turn your back. I mean, I felt bad for the kid, but the mother did it. Who does that? In retaliation, her daughter Sarah was removed from the team. 